Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at building a tkinter GUI. We're going to build a very simple application that has a label and has a button and we are going to update the label on the button click. What data is going to go into the label is referencing something we've done in a previous video where we built pickles long-term data storage specifically for Python files and we built a product class so this is intended to mimic some type of retail product where you have item id description price some type of point of sale system maybe and just want to show the code that is in this video so that you have a sense of what we're using we have the stir function we're going to be using that load products so i did make one little change from the previous video i I say if the file's not here, create the file, basically. And then we have save products, which just saves the file. Don't think we're going to be using that in this video. And then the main function, which we're not going to be using this because we're going to be running the product GUI module. So keep in mind, when you have these main functions here, these main functions run when you run that specific module. So if I right click and run this, this main function will run, specifically this guy will run, but we're going to be running this guy, so this code won't be running over here. Okay, now that we've covered the basics of that, let's get into the GUI elements. So the first thing I have on the screen on the left over here is the basic setup I'm going to use. We're importing tkinter, we're importing message box because um, for some reason you have to import that. And then we're going to uh, import this code on the right over here. We're going to import my product class. These two are in the same folder, so I'm able to do that. We're going to be importing this guy right here. So we're going to have access to all of this code. And we're going to use that code. So the first thing that we're going to do to build the tkinter application is build a GUI class, and then we're going to run this class with the constructor. So starting off with the constructor, we build A window self main window will be the name this is a very boilerplate standard way to build our tkinter app the naming convention is very common so if I run this you'll notice it closes right away nothing appears on the screen why is that well tkinter requires you to effectively run an infinite loop with this main loop function. Now the window will stay open. That's just how they built it. So this is how you keep the window open. Next, uh, we can change, we can change uh, this TK right here. We're going to change that to be something more relevant to what our app does. Oops. Self main window. So because we created that window earlier, that's what we saw when we clicked play. We saw the main window. Now you don't need to, really quick, you don't need actually to put that. You can just run it like this. But this does create a problem where now I can't access this GUI element. That's why we saved it to main window. Right? So that's why I have... That's why I have this. Now I can modify that window. So we're going to modify that window. We're going to modify the title of it, which is that TK what it used to say TK in the upper hand left. Now it says product inventory display. Nice little easy warm up. All right, let's create that load button. Let's add a button to our app here. So we got tkinter typo button self main window. So probably a little bit confusing, maybe not so intuitive, but we put the main window into the button parameter list here. We add it as an argument. We add this as an argument, and then this tells tkinter that this button is going inside the main window. And then let's put what the text of that button will be. 
So this will be the load products button. This will be the load products button. So now our application. Oh, and then to actually to actually see the button, we do need to do this pack function. This is what you can maybe say builds or places the button. Here, the button doesn't exist within the main window yet until I do pack. Then it puts it on the, then it actually puts it on my window. So you can see here, um, if I ran this without the pack, this would just be empty. There would be no button. Very simple way to add the, the button. We're gonna do the same thing with the label. So same technique, similar technique, we add the main window to the parameter list of the label function here. So we're adding in the argument. By sending it in as an argument, we're telling T Kinter that this label is going to go inside the main window. And then we're going to put a default value for what this label is going to say no products loaded so just an empty label and then we need to pack to put it in the window to build it to physically build it there you go and you can put some padding if you like to space your elements out I'm not too concerned about that yet get that to a later video and then the last thing we want to do is leverage our product class on the right hand side here we want to leverage that to update the label so right now we've just created a static application that puts a button and a label on a tcancer app main window doesn't do much now we're going to add that nice functionality that creates a dynamic application so i'm going to create a function called display products typo display products product load products so here we're getting we're getting that long-term data storage from the pickle or we're getting the mock data if this file doesn't exist. We're getting that file if it doesn't exist and we're going to receive it as a dictionary. We're receiving it as a dictionary. So we're going to loop through the dictionary and populate our label with this information. So that's what the load products met method here, static method. And we're also going to use the stir function here. So we're going to leverage this function here to display the data. We're going to build out a string. So my display text is going to be my new label. This is going to be an empty string right now. And then we're going to build that out. We're going to populate that. Oh, let's make that plural. For product in products. And then values is, you can see here, it's mentioning that we have a dictionary which is what load products returns as a dictionary. So here we have the values. So that's how we loop through all the values and then display text. We're going to use a string builder plus equals stir product. So basic for loop, we're going to be using this, uh, the value of, we're going to go through each value of the dictionary. And then I want all of this on a new line. So I'm going to add the new line character. So then that goes on a new line. So we're almost done here, but we're missing one really important detail, which is how do we get this onto our label? How do we get this onto our label and how do we link it with our button? So two really important steps here. First, let's look at how are we going to get this onto our label? So we use this config function here. 
this config function can be thought of as update the label. I, I like thinking of it as update. And the way we say what part of the label, you can update many different, you can change many parts of the label, but the, and you can change the position of it, uh, a whole bunch of different things, the text, the font, the color. But what I want to change is what the text says. We want to change this property right here, right? We want to change the text property inherent inside that label. There's font, there's color, font color. There's going to be a whole bunch of properties, but we want to change the display text, the text that shows up there. And we want to use this variable that we just built from our products. So this will update our label, but there's no way to run this method. So the way to run this method, we want to link this method to our button. And the way we link that method to our button is up here in the load button method. So the way we're going to link that is with the command, the command property here. And then I say run this method here. So that's going to be self dot display products. Now, when we run, I don't think it's supposed to have the parentheses though, for some reason. Uh, I wonder what the error is actually. Return type probably, but that will run this method now. Um, so we can put this on a new line here so that it's visible. That's how we link our button to our, our method. So now when we click this button, the command will trigger this method, which updates our label using this. And where does the label get the information? The label gets the information from our products class, which is on the right over here loads these products and uses the stir method. So let's go ahead and give that a run. Cool. Uh, let's pull this on the screen over here. We got load products and you can see here, uh, didn't grow quite there. We have all of that product data ready to be viewed. So, Wrapping up, that's a simple way to add a button, a label, and update your label with a button command click with your tkinter GUI app. And added bonus, we are working in an object-oriented paradigm. We're using our product class to uh, streamline our data input and also have long-term storage for our data. We can load long-term stored data. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.